What do you reckon? Warm or daylight? I think daylight. I'm blinded now though. Hello everybody and welcome back to my new office. I say welcome back, that probably depends on whether or not you saw the end of the last video or not. In any case, it doesn't matter. Uh, I need to start this video with a thank you and that's because I think if you didn't watch my videos it would have been very difficult for me to convince Emily that I needed a room in which to make videos that nobody watched. Uh, I think this room probably would have ended up as like a yoga studio or a walk-in wardrobe or something which it doesn't bear thinking about it. We don't have to think about it because of you. So thank you very much for uh, for watching because it means I get to have a room where I can mess around and work in, work in. I get to have a room that I can work in and make videos. <laughs> I chose to do this clip sat down. This is not a sit down clip, I've got a backpack on. Uh, anyway, this video is about some bits and pieces, photography bits and pieces that I use that I would recommend. Now there's plenty of stuff that I use that I wouldn't necessarily recommend because they break all the time, whatever. None of that's going to be in this video, it's just stuff that I've tried and tested and love and it's improved my photography and therefore I think it might be able to improve your photography too. Uh, starting with this, this Peak Design Capture Plate Clip thing. I don't really know exactly how to describe it, but it's brilliant. Uh, basically, I've had it, if you don't know what it is, actually I'll show you with a camera. Um, I've had it about six months and it's completely revolutionised how I take photos. That might be a bit strong. It's really helped how I take photos. Basically, uh, there's a little plate on the bottom of my camera and it just slots into there and then the camera that I have just sort of floats on my backpack strap. You see that? How I'm naturally modelling that. Very, very good, particularly for a photographer like me who's a bit kind of run and gun and doesn't like to put their camera away between locations in case I see something else that I might want to take a photo of. Also, I'm ridiculously clumsy, so when I'm walking up mountains and on ice and stuff, I really, really need the use of both hands. And uh, before, if I was kind of carrying my camera or even if it was on a strap but kind of swinging around me, um, it was just a bit dodgy and I tended to lose my balance quite a lot and I'd fall on my camera and tears would ensue. Uh, that doesn't happen so much anymore because now my camera's in a convenient place, as I say I've got two hands and it's readily available for me anytime that I want to take a photo. Uh, I really thought hard before I bought this to be honest because it's quite an expensive piece of kit for what it is, I mean essentially it's just a metal clip, uh, but I think it was about 70 quid. But thinking about it now, given how much I appreciate this and how many more photos I take and, and how much more I enjoy the process of photography because I'm not constantly in and out of a bag or haven't got a camera swinging around my waist. Uh, I'd probably pay triple what I paid for it. So brilliant piece of kit, I'd order one straight away again if this one broke or I lost it or something. Which hopefully won't happen because as I say it's, it's expensive. <laughs> Uh, the next thing that I think is a good investment is a printer. Now, I resisted buying a printer for a long, long time after people started telling me that it was a good investment. I mean, for years people told me that I should print my images in order to review them properly. But I just thought, well, how much better can that be than just looking at my stuff on a screen? Uh, but I was wrong. It's, it's much better. Don't know why, though. And I've been thinking, without any scientific evidence to back this up, that it might have something to do with the fact that on a screen, your mind is trained to think that there are just going to be moving images. I mean, like, you watch movies on screens, uh, you flip between programs on screens, even if you're reading on screens, you're scrolling and therefore the screen is moving. So maybe you're just trained to not look as thoroughly at things that are on a screen as you are when they're on paper, because you know that paper doesn't move. As I say, no scientific evidence at all to back that up. But I've just been trying to figure out why it's so much better looking at your photos on paper than it is on screen and I'm, I'm drawing blanks other than that, to be honest. Now I've got to say, as much as I've learned to love looking at my images on paper, it's not a particularly cheap process. Now this printer, which is a Canon uh, Pro 10S, which sits somewhere in the middle of their range of prosumer slash professional printers, uh, this was about £500, which is um, not cheap, I mean you can get much cheaper ones, but I also use Canon inks exclusively, which again are not cheap, and I use premium quality uh, fine art paper, which again is super expensive. Uh, you can do this much cheaper and I'd probably urge you to if you're just printing your stuff to review your images, but obviously I sell prints as well, which is why I use 
premium stuff. On that subject actually, just while I'm waiting for this to print, I did a print sale a couple of weeks before Christmas. I'm currently printing those images and will be shipping them in the next kind of week or two. I'm also going to do another print sale now, same images, the Greenland and Iceland ones, where stuff will be half price for a week after this video goes live on my website, link in the description, and then after that if any are still available uh, they'll go back to full price again. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do another quick flash sale, I think they call them, since it's January. Yes! It really is a magical process, I, I do absolutely love it. I wish I'd started doing it sooner to be honest. I mean it's probably also not the most environmentally friendly thing to do. I mean clearly you're using resources and paper. What I've done to combat that, given that I travel a lot and, and clearly print a lot as well, is I've just given up red meat. I mean I say given up, I've, I've largely given it up, apart from sort of special occasions. I watched uh, Before the Flood, that Leonardo DiCaprio thing, and he was talking about how if you're gonna give up one thing and you give up red meat, then that'll go a long way to cutting your carbon footprint. So, um, so yeah, that's what I've done to, to combat this. But I love this. You, uh, you joined me at quite a tense time. Basically, I put these shelves up the other day. They're the first shelves I've ever put up and uh, I have pretty much zero confidence in their ability to hold anything. Hence why I've just got succulents on the top one, because, I mean, they're lighter than air. Anyway, I've put the items for this point on the shelf just to see what happens, and um, so far, so good. Anyway, uh, basically, these items are location information. Now, if you're an outdoor photographer, there is nothing quite like the feeling of getting to a location that you've got to of your own accord that nobody's told you about, you've just found it and taking a good photo there. Kind of following a path and thinking, I wonder where that goes or I wonder what's on top of that hill. Getting there and just finding the most amazing scene. There's nothing like that. But uh, we all only have 24 hours in a day and sometimes I think it's okay to get some advice and a pointer in the right direction, which is where things like ordnance survey maps come up. So I use these quite a lot, mostly unsuccessfully because I'm terrible at navigating myself, which is why I also use the same thing but on my phone. And of course the advantage of using your phone is that you get GPS information and uh, you can see if you're still on a footpath or if you're trespassing on someone's land, which I do frequently. So yeah, maps. Crucial investment. Uh, the other type of information, in a similar vein to be honest, is photography books, uh, which have kind of map coordinates and stuff in them, but also lots of photos and suggestions of when to go to particular locations and when to check out particular places. Uh, yeah, I love books like this. These are two new ones that I've bought. Uh, a Peak District one, where I've moved to, and North Wales, where I spend a lot of time anyway. I'm just after some new locations. Uh, they're really, really helpful, good for tips and advice, and you don't have to listen to everything that they say, but they're good at pointing you in the right direction and uh, giving you inspiration. Uh, this cupboard is basically testament to item number four which is photography bags. Now, about this time last year, I made a video all about my camera bag history, which, I mean, on the list of boring videos on YouTube, it, it must be up there. But basically, in that video, I just went through uh, all of the bags that I'd used as camera bags in the past, why I'd used them, and how I'd adapted them to use as photography bags. I mean, I'll link it here. You probably don't want to watch it, but I'll link it anyway. Um, and basically, I left that video by saying that at that time, this was the bag that I was using consistently, which was a Peak Design Everyday Backpack. Um, I've now stopped using this. Some money in there. Sweet. Uh, I've now stopped using this pretty much for photography because after about a year of using it for photography, it started to really do my head in. Now that's not to say it's a bad bag. Camera bags are completely personal items and how you get on with them depends entirely on your workflow. Basically, I decided after a year of that that I needed one that opened at the back, like yeah, this, which is a low pro, uh, pro tactic 450 W or something. And uh, essentially, it opens from the back. So you can put your bag on the floor and get to all your gear very quickly. And uh, I really like that concept, but this bag isn't perfect. And so the, uh, the search has continued. So this is a Mindshift Backlight 26 litre. And again, it opens from the back, but this has lots more other kind of little spaces for everyday stuff like water bottles and hat and gloves and all the rest of it. So this is, uh, is the current front runner to be my, 
my next kind of long-term backpack. I've only used it a couple of times, but I've really liked it so far. Apart from these waist straps that you can't get rid of, and I don't often like waist straps, so that's a bit annoying. But this is the closest I've got so far to the kind of bag that I want. Now, to be honest, as I said, the kind of bags that I have in my bag wardrobe is uh, it's not really important. What is important is that you take the time and possibly money to try and find a bag that works for you and your workflow. Because in terms of uh, enjoyment and productivity, they can make a massive difference to your photos. And as I say, this little collection here is just to show the fact that I've been searching for a good bag for a long, long time. Not good bag, a bag that I get on with. They're all good bags. Way too many bags. <laughs> And thing number five on the list of things to spend money on in photography is lenses. Uh, now I've spoken a little bit about this before on this channel and when I've spoken to beginners in the past typically I've noticed that they place too much emphasis on the importance of cameras and too little on the importance of lenses. It's like they think that cameras are sort of like Batman and lenses are like Robin. And if you've watched this channel for a while that probably isn't the first really weird analogy you've heard me say. But basically, if somebody gave me like a thousand pounds to spend on a camera and one lens, first of all, I'd say thank you. And second, I'd probably spend 250 or 300 pounds on the camera and then the rest on the lens. Because good glass, by and large, makes a bigger difference than a good camera in image quality. And we can talk about what image quality is another time because it's really up for debate as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, good glass will make a big, big difference compared to what a camera will do a lot of the time. There are a few caveats to that. Like if you're a, a, a concert photographer or a sports photographer, then chances are you'll want a camera with the latest and greatest autofocus and the latest and greatest low light performance. Outside of that though, I would suggest that most of the time you're better off spending more of your money on glass. Also financially it makes sense because more often than not lenses don't get updated all that often in comparison to cameras. So you could buy a lens and then in five years time decide to sell it. You might not lose that much money. Whereas with a camera, you could end up selling a body that's like two or three generations old. So you're not gonna get anywhere near what you paid for it back. Not the case with lenses. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope some or all of that was useful. Uh, at some stage, when I've got this room finished, I'll do a bit of a room tour. I mean, you've seen sort of bits and bobs of it already, but I'll, I'll show the intricate details of which there aren't really any, but I mean, I've spent a fortune on this room, so I need to milk the content somehow. Uh, until the next time, if you're interested in researching any of the things I've spoken about, I'll leave links in the description. And uh, happy shopping if you decide to buy anything. Um, and I'm really nervous about those shelves. I don't think they're going to stay there. They'll probably fall down as soon as I put like a coffee under them or something. Something to inflict maximum damage, I imagine. Hmm. See you next time. Oh yeah, print sale. So, um... For the first week after this video goes live, the prints that I mentioned, the Greenland and Iceland prints, will be half price. Um, so yeah, there'll be a link in the description to my website for those too. Uh, yeah, see you later.